Solar power problems got you down? Me too. I'm going to outline how I tested to see what the problem was and how I determined which solar panels I needed to replace. If you're following along with this season of Idiot Drives Around in a Van, you might know that my solar power system is not working. I'm parked in Montana here, so let's go through how we're going to test the solar panels to see if that's the problem. Oh man, my hair is crazy in this video. <laughs> The panels I have are HQST 100 watt 12 volt monocrystalline lightweight flexible panels and that's a little bit of a tongue twister. The flexible ones are really great because it's less air resistance and way way lighter than the regular ones. Weighing in at a mere 4 pounds, this panel is great for stealth and it's effortless to transport, you can hang it, remove it, and it's really great for like non-permanent applications because you can move them around so easy. These fit right over the contour of the van and have almost zero profile. Wind resistance? Forget about that. I did something pretty neat in the install video and attached them without drilling holes in the roof. This was done through industrial strength velcro, and that stuff is amazing. There's links below in the description for all of this stuff. The panels also have little holes in them so that you can even use zip ties on them, which seems like a really great way to do it. I think I would do it that if I had to redo it. The drawbacks I'm seeing though is that they're a little bit more expensive and they may not be as durable or long-lasting apparently. They can also be scratched since they're plastic and not glass like the standard ones. But that also means they won't shatter like the glass ones, so you, you really get to pick your options here. Also, as a note, the flexible panels are not bendable. There's a bit of a distinction between there, between flexible and bendable. They can only bend a bit before they break. The way I kind of think about it is a credit card can flex, but if you try and fold it, it snaps. It's similar plastic material and the solar cells are still fragile. To put it simply, or maybe a little bit more complexly, solar cells are made up of semiconductors, which is a material that absorbs a portion of the light's energy and it frees electrons. The flow of the electrons is controlled by the energetic fields. If metals are placed above and, you know, or below the solar cells, energy can be drawn from that electric current and it can be stored in your batteries, which is great and power all your stuff. Solar panels are basically packages of connected solar cells and that's what you have to be careful not to break by snapping it in half. Optimum voltage for one of these panels is 17.7 .7 volts, and we're certainly not getting anywhere near that even in ideal sun. It could be for a number of reasons why we're not getting the optimum voltage, but fortunately solar panels require pretty low maintenance. Unlike generators which are composed of you know all the moving components and require repair or replacement, solar panels don't have those moving parts and they can't rust or really break down that easily, but they do need to be cleaned and that may be why we're not getting the full volts. Cleaning your solar panels regularly can add some serious voltage to your input. Uh, I know the first time I did it I went from like 14 volts to about 50 volts. I was like wow I didn't know I had to clean it every couple of weeks. After this drive across the country these panels are a bit dirty so we gotta clean them first. Uh, with these panels, and I'm guessing most panels, you don't want to use any sort of soap or fluid other than water. And that means I don't go through the automatic car washes either. I do the self-service ones. I like those a bit better anyway because I can clean problem areas quicker and it's sometimes cheaper too depending on where you are. Here I'm also using a microfiber cloth to clean them to avoid scratches at all costs. Now you don't need a special cloth yourself, but don't use like, you know, old denim to clean them. <laughs> or you know what I mean. For the most part, you can basically shoot it with a garden hose to rinse off most of all your problems. I'm a little bit more methodical when I'm in the mood, so I'm going to sit up here and clean it pretty well because we're going to do some extensive tests. In these extensive tests, we're going to see if the solar issues are coming from the panels or not. These panels are wired in series, so if one or two panels are dead, then it's bringing the entire system down hard. I've labeled the panels A, B, C, and D and we know that when they're all together I'm getting abysmal to no power from them. So I'll disconnect one at a time and measure how many volts I'm getting. First here I started recording A and C and then A, B, C and then so on in a pattern. <laughs> I'm not angry or grumpy in this clip it's just my poor computer heavy eyes are very sensitive I gotta squint to see outside. So now we've got our little list of power with all the different setups. D by itself, zero watts. It's definitely a dead panel. Uh, maybe the fuse broke its side or something. Or, you know, I'm not really sure how that worked, but I'm gonna look it up. And it's been less than a year. I'm sure it's still under warranty, I hope. Well, I think I figured it out. 
panels B and D are not bringing me any volts. So I think they're busted. Maybe the fuse or whatever makes the solar panels work. Got to figure out if they're still under warranty. They should be. It's less than a year. This is similar to the results of yesterday. However, I'm getting lower volts than I was yesterday. If you can see at 14. But that could have just been a spike. So that also doesn't solve the problem of, you know, even when it is, you know, 14, 17 volts coming in, it's not charging past like 12.3, 12.4. 4.4 is the max I've seen and of course this I don't know what even this symbol regulates because it never goes full even when the I mean it's related to the volts of the battery but it's not it's some kind of like capacity or something I have no idea and the manual is garbage it doesn't tell you anything about it I've always been running at like this it looks like you know 15% of the image I've seen it so I've hooked it up to uh, shore power before and I've seen it get almost to the top, and that was like 14.7 volts charged. And that's what it's supposed to cap out at. You know, that's that's considered a full charge for these batteries. But this controller, I think, is a little wonky and has never never done it naturally. I think the naturalist I've gotten is 12.7, which is not high enough. Maybe I need to start. I mean, I haven't even been drawing power from it, you know. There's nothing on in here. I haven't been running anything. I took the fridge out. Not sure. Another test we're going to do, and maybe a quicker test, is with this voltmeter. You can find these on Amazon or someplace like a hardware store. Radio Shack would be a good place for this stuff if they were still around. So I've got the battery charge uh, voltmeter, the battery tester. I've got it set to uh, 12 volt. So we're going to put, so on, on each solar panel, they've got negative and positive right here. So this is negative, so we're going to put the black in negative first. Oh, that is the wrong one. So we're going to put, this is the negative, we'll put the black one in here. This is kind of difficult with uh, one hand, and this in here, but I already tested this one. It's negative, it's not reading anything. So fuse has popped or something, or panel's just not working, and it's less than a year old. So our voltmeter test has determined the same findings as my previous process of elimination test. Panels B and D are not producing any power. And it's either due to the lack of sun or some other reason, panels A and C are producing 60% and 70% of the optimum output, respectively. But we know they're at least putting out power, and I'll take what I can get. Well, now we know that we have to fix the solar panels to get our power flowing again. Now what we're going to do about that is in a different video. If you want to watch the exciting conclusion to this, uh, make sure you hit subscribe and that little bell button down there next to the subscribe button that means you'll get a little notification when the sequel comes up thanks for hanging out with me today you guys